Welcome back to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, you know it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my socials. So as always, in this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at the untapped business opportunities that actually out here young guys can tap into. In studio, I'm joined by none other than Tim Orao Shikalo, and uh, he's part of the Youth in Business Africa. It's an organization that he'll be talking us, taking us through what he de deals with and uh, the services they offer, opportunities that are actually on that particular platform for you guys. So kindly introduce yourself, Trim. Uh, if I've left out anything on your <laughs> on your bio, this is the right time. You go. Uh, tell us more about who well, Tim is. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. You're very much uh, welcome. It's a pleasure. Um, my name is Tim, like you said, Tim Orao Shikalo. Um, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I'm very passionate about entrepreneurship. And uh, I'm one of the directors of Youth in Business Africa. Youth in Business Africa is a trade support institution. We are membership based. We are devolved in all counties. Um, as the name suggests, Youth in Business Africa, we are hoping to move into other countries within the continent. We started with uh, Kenya, we are moving into Uganda and Tanzania uh, before the close of the year, and hopefully into more countries as the years go by. Um, currently, we are looking at, we are having a membership of uh, 1,200 youth-led uh, uh, businesses and our organization, and we are hoping to grow the number to around five to 10,000 before the year ends. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's uh, really what we do, rather really what we are. All right. Mm -hmm. And before we get into, into details on yes. uh, matters pertaining uh, youth in business Africa, uh, let, take, take us through. Uh, what was your life growing up? Where did oh. your entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit come from, but in the morning? <laughs> um, well, I grew up in the traditional setting. Okay. Um, my parents, well, I was born in Mombasa. My dad used to move a lot because of transfers, job transfers. So we really never um, had a set base where we, we lived until this was 97, 98, where we moved now to Ptagela. Um So my, my background in business actually um, was inspired by my father because he was a real entrepreneur in his own, in his own right, um, even in, in the rural area, he used to set up, well, he started an agribusiness. So my, uh, my understanding of business was really geared towards agribusiness. Uh, but after school um, and seeing all the opportunities that are out there, I was introduced to other business sectors. I have a background in finance. Um, I started with um, I started with in quotes fashion because I used to I used to I used to get orders and go to tailors and you know make outfits for my clients and then I moved from, from that into um, entirely concentrating on agri business uh, and then now into other different businesses. Let me also just say that um, most of these businesses that I did I faced challenges and we had to close down. So the motivation now, uh, what led me now to, you know, get into youth, in, uh, rather start Youth in Business Africa, which was by then Transform Youth, Club, was um, the notion that the challenges that I'd faced, I wanted to address to anyone who probably wanted to start business and give my guidance uh, on how to avoid them, just to, you know, just to, to pave the way for the guys who wanted to get into, into entrepreneurship. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And I, uh, you've mentioned something very important, whereby yes. that you're into fashion, you're into design, and you yes. and you moved from that, you're into agribusiness, but you ended up closing these particular businesses. At what particular point does one recognize that this is not mm. working for me, this particular idea is not working mm. for me, and it's time for me to transition? Well, there are a number of factors that come into play, but uh, for me, I'd probably say, you know, the, the, the main reason you start a business is to make money. Very sure. Yes. So when you're facing challenges when it comes to making the money, um, then and, and suddenly it does not mean that you're not making any money, but then you have a set uh, goal in terms of what amounts you want to make. So if you find yourself in a position where you're not hitting your goals uh, time and again, then it, you find yourself that uh, you. you you find yourself in a position where you have to choose between, you know, trying out something different. For me, I think most of the businesses that I closed, I had no passion in them. 
so uh, you know the notion of uh, and this is something that I, f I see many young people um, go through is that when you're starting a business the the, the whole idea of making money being the first um, will probably be the one that you know lets the business go down the train because if you're concentrating so much on making the money then when you start facing challenges then you know you're not innovative in your way you're not creative because then this puts a stopper on on how you push your business so for me um, and also feel consistency on the yes there. yes so for me i i was jumping through all these businesses not because of the money but really just to find out what um i really was good at mm -hmm. or rather what i had passion you know because for me i thought my passion was in making the money but you find that after after a while uh, being in business that's why you'd find even in employment that people are employed and they're getting good salaries but then they get to a point where you know you've seen these stories in in, in even in newspapers in the media social social media uh, print media where you've seen pilot leaves job and goes into into you know, farming farming yes. you know because at the end of the day you know how we are um, how we are set up as humans mm -hmm. um, we have a purpose why we're here so if um, you're going away from your purpose you'd find that you know you'd 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 be doing something and you'd be getting results out of it but then your uh, your whole um, your whole mechanism of how you set up you'd find that you're not satisfied I think that's oh, that's actually that the, that's actually the biggest thing the satisfaction okay. the, the the fulfillment uh, once that's lacking then you'd find that uh, your concentration level probably on whatever you're doing be it work or be it business uh, goes down all right yeah, yeah. and uh, what is uh, when it comes to youth in business Africa yes. which we I believe you're focusing is right now take us through in details what you guys actually do and also the problem you're solving in the market um, so for youth in business like I said you know we are, mm -hmm. we are a trade support institution so okay. the name suggests mm -hmm. we support trade you support trade yeah, so we 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 offer a number of benefits to to our members mm -hmm. Um, uh, one of it being access to market because we see that this is a very big problem. We have people who have bid from products to services exemplary in their own right. People are doing very magnificent, people are innovative in their own way. Uh, but you find that whatever their bid products that they're producing, they have no market for that. Even in agribusiness, you'd find that people plant. They, you know, they get their produce, but they don't know where to sell. Oh yes, and then the issue of middlemen. Yes, the issue of middlemen, which is a very big thing, a uh, big issue. So you find that what we are doing is within the organization is we are offering access to market. Okay. Why we are called Youth in Business Africa is we are just not offer offering sorry uh, market to the local, uh, to the local. Yeah, we are we are offering market to the international. Um, on the international level. Nice. So what happens um, from now moving from access to market to now advocacy is um, we sit down with agencies that support, like we uh, we just got into an MOU with Kentred, um, which um, um, which is the, the, the agency that uh, that deals with exportation and importation. And we want to see how to, you know, smoothen the, the process of uh, guys exporting uh, within our within our organization and guys importing so we have people who import who export their products we have guys within um, because we are devolved in all business sectors so we have people even in the fashion industry who you know will probably do their outfits and what they want them out there we have people who want to bring in fabric probably from Ghana from you know, the West African countries mm -hmm. um, so just to smoothen the process of you know moving your products out or moving raw materials, whatever products inside. So we we now move from access to market to advocacy, mm -hmm. um, and then we move to funding because now we understand. Okay, so before funding, we do enterprise development. Okay. So we look at your business where it is. Do you need acceleration in any way? How um, can we uh, structure it in a way that your business can grow? Um, so we, we development and coaching. Yeah, not yeah, development and coaching. Okay. okay. Um, just that's just one of the aspects. Mm -hmm. And the other aspe aspect now is funding, where now we see if you probably need injection in your business, and so we um, we link you up with the with the with funders or people who would probably who are interested in your innovation, your business. Okay. Um, let me just put this out there that we necessarily don't fund ideas. Mm -hmm. We fund because we've had an issue with with people fund with rather with people coming with, to us with ideas. Mm -hmm. um, they're not committed enough to you know see it through. Oh, 
right. so you have young guys coming with brilliant ideas okay. and then you fund them and then a year down the line the business has gone down the drain. So losses to both sides yes. investor. Yes, and so you lose, you lose on both sides. Okay. So what we're really concentrating on are businesses that have been in the market so that we can see a trend. You know, we can see that you've moved from this point, from point A to point B and cool. now we want to see how we can move you from ah. point B to point C or point D. Nice. You know, nice. yes. So who is eligible to be part of uh, Youth in Business Africa as a member? Well, for us, um, as the name suggests, it's youth. For our organization, we term our youth as 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. But we are open to, because we, we necessarily do not necessarily just work with youth. Mm -hmm. We also work with women and people with disability. Um, and for us, we have, even within our within organization, we have people who have joined us as individuals. We have a young guy in, uh, in Bugoma, actually, mm -hmm. who's uh, 16 years and doing uh, amazing work, you know. And, and, and obviously within our policies, he does not fall as a youth, but we support such kinds of uh, engagements with young people or even older people. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Aleon, you mentioned that when it comes to investing into, you don't invest in ideas, yes. but probably an actual business. So, at what particular point, or for someone who's watching this conversation and they they would like to be funded in their business, what criteria do you go through to decide that uh, person A gets to be funded and person B doesn't get to be funded? Well. Um, for us, yeah, as an organization, okay, let me speak for me personally, yeah, what, what I would look at and to advise my decision to either um, support someone to be funded or not is, um, one, I look at someone who's failed, you know, because I have, I have failed in my businesses before, so I know what works and what does not work. So you probably don't fund uh, book entrepreneurs, you know, someone who come with a business plan and say, this is how the market is, this is how it's going to be, this is how I'll make my money. We, we work with people who, and it's controversial, but for me, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably, you know, equate maybe entrepreneurship to something like swimming, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, you can read many books about swimming, <laughs> but that day that you go to, if you've not gone to the water and uh, tried swimming, you know, you'd true. probably drown, yeah? yeah? So for me, I'd probably, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll trust someone who's been in the water and swam because entrepreneurship is more or less like, um, you, you, you really have to practice it. Okay. You really have to be in the market. You really have to. All these business books are helpful, but just as material, you know. No, right. So, yeah. Sorry. Please continue. Yeah, so um, that's the first thing that, that, that advises my decision. You know, someone who's been in it, someone will tell me, this. I've tried this, this has not worked, um, and now I'm looking at other options. But as an organization, what we really look at are... Um, just the basic things, you know, are you registered, the, the, the basic, are you, are, you, are you legally operating as a business? Mm -hmm. But then um, to qualify for funding, we have to see um, your projections. You know, this is where you are at, this is where you're going, so that we can see how, um, how are we going to help you. We have people who come, um, we, had, we had someone uh, before the year ended who wanted to buy a farm in Kitengela that was doing um, like chicken farm, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the layers were, you know, were producing, I think, a quantity, whatever quantity of eggs that were there. And the guy, you know, came and said, this is a good business, but he's not tried that business, you know. So it seemed like a good opportunity. But, you know, for us, you know, we told him, do this. Have you tried selling eggs before? No. So you do this. You sell those eggs, iterate. Once you've, uh, once you've gotten to a certain number of, uh, in the market, then come back to us and say, listen, I got this business, I've sold eggs to even the local shop, now I want to move into you know, something different. So for us, it's, it's more or less about projections, where you've been and where you're going. Okay. Yes. Uh, listening to you, the reason why I'm all smiling is because uh, the same concept is from uh, a well-known uh, serial entrepreneur and also a motivational speaker from South Africa, Vusi yes. Bimbekwayo. Yeah. And he speaks the same. And also, it's the, sa it's the, same, uh, the same theory of if you have couple of uh, cooking books and you're never yeah. going to the kitchen yeah. clearly you have to uh, you know do it practical True. so in this particular space I'm so sure you've interacted to you've interacted with so many young entrepreneurs yes. we're a couple of, couple of businesses that uh, require minimal capital intense intense and they and in that particular space it has not been you know tapped couple of opportunities in that space um, well let me just say this broadly. Yeah? Um, you know, the, the, the main reason we go into business, like I said, is to make money. Mm -hmm. And, and th there's something that, there's a study of Gopology, which is really just uh, studying the, 
the gaps in the industry. So if you if you come in and identify a gap in any sector, it can be you know, like like you said, what business? Yeah, you know, you can go to South Sudan and just sell water because mm -hmm. that's what's needed in a certain section, right? And then you can you can go to what to Somalia where it's hot or something. It's ice cream or machacos, you know. <laughs> yes. So really, there there are no. Um, I really can't advise broad uh, on specific businesses okay. because specific businesses have different market niches. Very true. So you'd find that what works in Nairobi probably doesn't work in Machakos or Kisumu. you know. So yeah. I've interacted, like I've said, our, our organization is devolved in all counties. So the same. tell us then yes. uh, what to look out for when looking for uh, uh, a niche in a particular okay. environment, geographical area that you can start yeah. up a business. Yeah. So before starting any business, you do probably you know. Um, find a problem. Mm -hmm. That's just exactly it, you know. Identify a problem, and once you've identified the solution to the problem, you're in business. Because at the end of the day, um, what what clients buy, what entrepreneurship is, clients buy solutions. So if you're thirsty, the solution is water, you buy water from a vendor. If, uh, if you want education, you probably pay for school. So building a school, um, of, uh, is, is, is a business in itself because you've identified a place where there are no schools and people probably need education. Uh, fashion, same thing, the people would probably need clothes. So uh, what most entrepreneurs should know when they're getting into business is mm -hmm. identify the problem, come up with a solution. Always iterate the solution because at the end of the day you find that why business A will grow and business B wouldn't grow is because of the services or the, the, the more easier or accessible the solutions are. Mm -hmm. So you'd find um, why probably um, equity grew, uh, grew um, at a very steady state as compared to probably Barclays that now is ABSA is because you know they went to the Mashinani and as compared to maybe Barclays which was set up in township areas so people had to travel there. So as a solution, um, equity so, let us go to where the masses are. All you know? right. Yeah. Okay, and when it comes to back to your, the business, uh, the youth in business Africa, and what you guys are offering, you spoke about market uh, a marketing platform. Yes, that you you guys offer uh, an, on a larger scale, which is internationally. Yes. So how does that work? Um, well, we have a virtual assistant called Market Design. Biz, market Design. Um, when you go to the website, it has um, five thousand marketplaces. It has over a hundred thousand products here yeah, within the platform all categorized into 60 product categories. So what happens is we um, we offer access to those markets. So we understand that, you know, if if you're if you're um, in agribusiness and you you're in food, so you 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 know your produce is probably what chili. You'd want markets where to sell it, not local just not just locally, so you can exhaust the local market and go into the international market. If you're in maybe the fashion industry, you probably want fabric to make, you know, um, your own outfits for your clients. We make it easier for you to access the people who sell the fabrics. So you'd find that um, if you if you, you know if you see the if you see the ornaments or the dresses or even the Maasai culture, you've noticed that most um, uh, most European countries. Yeah, let me just move to to the European side. Would, would want the ornaments and all that here, yeah, and the access is is, is a bit difficult here. Yeah. So what we do is we we smoothen and 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 give them access to such kinds of um, to the end to the end producer. So if if I want certain ornaments or outfits, I can get through to you as the end. You know, just to not necessarily to cut down on the middleman, but just to um, to authenticate the whole process. You know, you're dealing with the end uh, producer or the end buyer. Yes. Okay, right. And who, how can people uh, register on this particular platform? Is there a subscription fee? Yeah, well, well we are membership based, so um, our annual membership fee is a thousand shillings for an individual. The fee goes up if you're a company, it's three thousand. If you're a BMO, if you're a group, it goes to five thousand. If you want to be a patron, it's twenty thousand. There are different, um, there are different uh, premium, premium rates. There are pe different rates. Mm -hmm. You can find that on our website. It's www.youthinbusinessafrica.com. Um, but then, as you join, then there are those necessities that we probably ask you. 
Um, the normal, you know, what's your name, um, if you have a business, the business certificate, your location, what you're looking at, because you also want to understand why are you joining us, you know, what are you looking at, what services or what benefits do you want to get from joining us. There are people who come to us for networking, there are people who want to join us for funding, um, there are people who want to join us, um, we have people who join us ad as advisors, so people who just come in and say, um, I have made it in this sector, so I'm in the legal industry, I've made it in it, so I want to advise anyone who will be in our sector and you know mentor them so that people will join us uh, under the mentorship program so we have all these um, benefits that are highlighted um, uh, in, in, in our websites okay yeah, yeah. all right so we've looked at it on the on the angle of uh, uh, someone who is into business and is looking for the market out there yeah. now let's look at a potential clientele how do you reach out to a potential clientele um, well for us our clients are the business people Yes, now I'm speaking about for, yeah. now you are, okay, so the, there's the business guy. Okay, let's put it as I am the business person here. Yes. Uh, maybe in fashion coming to you. Yeah. In order to reach out to the market, which is on a global scale. Yeah. How for are you, you guys, now, yeah. yeah, for me now. Yeah. So how am I going to get my potential clients on that global scale? Okay, how so, for us, okay so for us, yeah. we, how our company is structured, we, mm -hmm. have, we have the marketing team. Okay. Um, actually came with the marketing lead, she's here. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is we look at, you know, how your company is structured. Mm -hmm. We look at what your target audience is. And then we are set out to now um, um, create systems to see how to reach out to the, to the local, or uh, rather to the international markets. Most of the, most of the um, ways that people use this is just social media um, outreach that's exactly probably what we also do but we um, but we also capitalize on the fact that we are a youth um, enterprise that, uh, that that's a network of youth entrepreneurs here yeah? so if um, you're in fashion and there's um, and there's someone who's holding an, a fashion event maybe in South Africa we have members who are from South Africa so the invitation comes through the, our members who are in South Africa so it's really just so it's really just a network of, right. of youth entrepreneurs who want okay. to help each All other. Right. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So probably now you could tell us the, uh, the guys that you're working with in terms of membership, like mm -hmm. in terms of countries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we uh, we have we have members from probably all countries, but for for us, I think um, the the highest number of well, we have you know, I can say like Ethiopia, I can just mention two only. That's why we want to really get into. We really want to set up offices in these uh, countries so that they can just see the benefit of joining our organization. But the highest number of membership we have is in Kenya, obviously because that's where we started, and that's where our national office is. Um, we're hoping to get into other countries, uh, and hopefully the numbers will grow once people now see our physical presence and how we can. Like I said, you know, the market, um, how the market, uh, how the business market is set up in Kenya is not the same way it's set up in Nigeria or South Africa. So what we're doing right now is we're spending so much time um, doing um, doing our own research for all these countries that we want to get in, so that we know once we get in, what value are we giving the members who will be joining um, our organization? All right. So, uh, from your background, which is you've, you've tried out a couple of businesses, yes. uh, what would you say that uh, is a key or couple of tips when it comes to running a business, especially a startup, because yeah. most of them don't make it to five years, yes. that will retain them for mo for longer years and actually prevent them from dying. So yeah. what are a couple of tips that you, from your journey? You well, for me, um, why why we actually got into, um, into funding was because we understood, you know, the, people talk about, like Facebook, yeah? what people don't talk about is the years um, that it took before Facebook was Facebook. You know, it took more than seven years, you know. So uh, the, the notion that, uh, the, the idea that, we've been, that has been sold to us, that whatever business you start um, has to grow to a, certain, to a certain level within a period of time, I think is what's wrong. So you have people, so you've been sold the notion first, this notion of do small, start small. So you have all these people coming from, um, we have guys who come f um, to us, everyone with the same idea. I want to buy clothes in, um, in Uganda, I want to sell here or whatever. So people want to sell clothes. We have people who want to open salons and want to get into beauty. 
Um, we want people who we, we, we have people who you know want to you know even in fashion, but um, the whole idea of of business mm -hmm. um, that we are trying to introduce is you can go you can grow big. We want to you know we are seeing through our research we've seen that the next ten to twenty years Africa's combined GDP will be among the fastest growing in the world, and the only way we'll get there is if we are producing more in terms of manufacturing. You know, not just service services, but something that comes from Africa. You know, so if it's you know, and we have all these raw materials, we have the resources. If it's gold, we have it's oil. We have you know, you remember when we were growing up? I think Kenya was known for py py pirate ram and all these other you know. And right now, no one can say where it is. So we want to see how to revive. We're all still this. known for tea, though. Yeah, we're still known for tea. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but all these things that mm -hmm. we do, you know, Sisal, yeah. you know, we want to, to go back and see how can we revive um, things that are natural, you mm -hmm. know, and, and to, a, to a larger scale and international scale. So for organization, we're not just looking at small businesses. So for me, you know, growing up, I think the, the biggest challenge that businesses will probably face are um, uh, the mindset first. You know, we have to change our mindset um, as young guys uh, that... Uh, we should be innovative in our own way. When it comes to the people who fund, mm -hmm. because we have, I've encountered, uh, you know, this affirmative fund, uh, uh, and 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 the, the biggest issue is, you know, people would fund you once, and when the business starts going down, they stop funding you. But like I said, you know, like Facebook, we, um, if you read the story, you know, we had people who funded. So they, f like, there are series. So you have a series A funding, series B. So you fund, you get to a certain level. You look for other funders. You fund, you get to a certain level. So that's exactly what we are doing. Okay. So we have people who have innovative ideas who come to us. We fund the little we can. We get them to a certain level. We don't stop funding them. Mm -hmm. We look for other people to put, inject more money, to push them to a, to a, to a, to the next level get more money, get more people to. So we really just need people who can have a little faith in us as young guys, you know, as we are getting into our own endeavors. And uh, so for, for, for guys who want to get entrepreneurship, just change the mindset and uh, just iterate. You know, you can start small and, you know, uh, grow towards the vision that you have. Very true, very true. A couple yeah. of achievements that, looking back, you're really proud that you embarked on this journey. Um, well, the achievements that I... Uh, what really, what, what I really pr uh, pride myself in is when you sit down with your members. So you've seen, seeing people grow. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's that's the biggest achievement that that we as an organization um, uh, take pride in. Okay. So you know, you 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 have someone who's joined us at a certain level um, as a business. So we have people actually join us with a business name, no office or nothing, you know. And then two, three years down the line. Or even even shorter period of six months or a year, you find that they have offices, they have employed two, three, four guys. There's totally growth. Yes, yes. Yeah. So just seeing the growth of someone who came to you with a vision, and you seeing the vision through, that we really take pride in that. Okay, a couple yes. of challenges that you're facing as a business. A uh, couple of challenges we're facing is uh, one bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, there's uh, people like politicizing everything. So we probably um, approach government entities and then look at it as, what are you guys trying to do? You know, um, the, the 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 biggest challenges uh, we also face are um, from the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we have guys who um, who who probably want who, who want to join up, want to get into entrepreneurship, but one don't have the passion, mm -hmm. two don't have just have like I said the people have not tried out anything. Mm -hmm. So you know we we let them back to the market rather to the to the field and tell them try this. If it works, come back to us. If it doesn't, still come back to us and see and let us see what went wrong. So we have the perception of you know people who want to be spoon fed and, and I think that the, the biggest challenge we have is people thinking that they really need capital to start businesses. And we have so many people with so great ideas but um, their mindset is fixed on I need to get someone to fund me so that I can start this business. And and yet they can start small. You know, like me before I started my business, like I told you I was in fashion. I was not in it because of the passion necessarily, but I knew I have to make some money to get into what I wanted to do. So, you know, just um, sell something, sell something, get a bit of money and then invest in, in your ideas. So th that's the biggest challenge you have, that people who are innovative and creative but are not pushing uh, towards their vision because they feel like they need help from you know, external uh, factors.
right yes. all right interesting there so give us a uh, the vision how does the vision look like when it comes to uh, youth in business africa i don't want to give you a particular time frame yeah. so well our vision, like vision is our vision is very big um mm -hmm. i think uh, what we're looking at um so a bit of background on before i got into youth in business i used to work for kenya national chambers of commerce I used to head the youth chapter um, the whole idea of youth in business is we, just like the name suggests, yeah, we want to be a network of youth business people in Africa. Mm. So uh, the vision is to connect each and every entrepreneur, be it formally or informally, within the continent so that we can um, market within ourselves. So we can, we can have our own, let me put it in, in quotes, we can have our own economy. So if you ever need anything, if you want to buy a phone, you buy it from someone who's who's dealing with phones, who's an entrepreneur within the platform. Right. Anything that you want from your from your earrings to your shoes, for men from the suits to so just supporting each other. If you want to buy food, you buy food from someone who set up a food uh, business who's a youth. So that's what we are actually looking at and not just within the country but uh, within the whole continent. Okay. Yes. Totally understandable. So if someone uh, who has been following up a conversation and they would like to you know, get in touch with you and uh, keep the conversation going. How can they reach out to you? Um, well, we are, we are in all social uh, platforms, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as Youth in Business Africa. Um, our website is youthinbusinessafrica.com. Um, yeah, um, that's that's how you can reach us. Mm -hmm. um, we are setting up an office. We used to be at Norwich Union, uh, but we closed up obviously after last year. You know, there was uh, you know everyone was hit hard. But we are opening offices right now in Upper Hill. Once that's done, then now we can have a physical location now where people can come and uh, and visit us. Uh, but you can reach out to us. We have. Um, uh, uh, we have county representatives in all counties, 47 of them. Mm -hmm. So if you're a youth entrepreneur in whichever county and you want um, guidance and to see how, be or rather to see how you can benefit from joining us, we have county representatives in your area. You can reach out to us, we can connect you to them, and then you can, you know, liaise with them and see how to benefit from joining us. All right. Thank yes. you very much, Tim, for creating time to be with us and talking to us about you know, untapped opportunities for young people mm -hmm. and, all, and also matters pertaining youth in business Africa. Thank you so much. It was lovely being here. Thank you very much. You're welcome as well. So that is Tim uh, Orao Shikalo. He's the director of uh, the youth, youth in Business Africa. We were talking about untapped business opportunities that are out there for young people and they can get it in too. So at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all those social media handles at Michelle. Ashira is where you can find me across all my socials. So make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way right here on Why in the Morning.